welcome to my kitchen. Well, actually it's my wife's kitchen. I just get to film in here today. And no, that's not a sexist comment by any stretch of the imagination. Like my wife is an amazing cook. Like she rocks this space out. This is her domain. You don't want me in the kitchen. Now I can be helpful and I can do some breakfast stuff and I'm outside of the kitchen, pretty killer on the grill. But outside of that, you want my wife in here because she is amazing. So welcome to my wife's kitchen. Uh, well, for today's episode, I want to come on the heels of something we discussed last week. So whether or not you had a chance to engage last week's episode, you're going to totally understand what we're talking about today. But for those of you who had a chance to watch or listen to last week's episode, you will know that we talked about do not fear. And then out of that, we talked about being strong and very courageous. But we started off by talking about fear, the positives, the negatives, and that how more than a hundred times in scripture, this phrase, do not fear, shows up. And so whenever I talk about do not fear, inevitably I get asked the question, okay, so what's up with the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom in the book of Proverbs? Like what is going on there? Uh, many of you know this phrase, um, others of you maybe not so much, but in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, in Proverbs 9, verse 10, in both of these places it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, actually, in the book of Job, chapter 28 and verse 28, so that's easy to remember, 28, 28, it says the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And so you look at this and you go, does God want us to be scared of him? Like, is that what the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom actually means? How in the world are we supposed to understand that? Well, anytime we come to the Bible, we always want to set the text in context. And in order to understand a text in context, at Walking the Text, we talk about six different lenses that you want to be looking through. And one of those lenses is the linguistic lens or the language lens. And so whenever you come to a key word, you want to ask the question, what is this in the original language and what does it mean? And in my ebook, The Number One Mistake Most Everyone Makes Reading the Bible, um, I link some free software resources for those of you who don't have um, a language background. But part of the reason why we're engaging one another in the teaching series is to give you nuggets of information that you don't have that will help you in other studies that you do. So when it comes to this phrase, this admonition that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The word fear in Hebrew is the word yira. And yira is spelled Y-A-R apostrophe A-H for those of you who are taking notes. And like all great Hebrew words, it carries a spectrum of meanings. And I want to highlight three of them for our discussion today. The first is how we typically think of fear in the English language. It's the word that means to be terrified. So in Jonah chapter 1, Jonah has just told the sailors what's going on in the midst of this storm, and it says they're terrified. It's the word yura. Uh, a second way in which the word yura is used or understood uh, shows up in 1 Kings chapter 3. So Solomon has just taken the throne, and he has this amazingly bizarre case that is brought before him. Many of you know about this. There were two women who, who had children at roughly the same time, and during the night, one of the children died, so the mother then took the child of the other mother, uh, the child that was still living, and claimed it was hers, and so it was a case that was brought before Solomon, and then Solomon had to handle it, and how he handled it is mesmerizing. It's amazing. Read it on your own time, 1 Kings chapter 3. But at the end, because of what Solomon did, it says all of the people were in awe of what Solomon did. It's the word yira. So yira can mean fear as in terrified. It can also mean the sense of awe and wonder. 
right? You stand at the ocean and you look out on the vastness of it and the waves crashing in and you're just overwhelmed with awe and wonder. That's Yira. You know, you stand on the edge of a mountain, you look out across the vast expanse and you go, this is unreal. That is also Yira. Uh, one other main way that it gets translated and understood is in the context of reverence. Over and over and over again, when it's talking about revering God or the reverence of God, typically the word behind that is the word yira. So it can mean fear, it mean, can mean awe, it also means this reverence and respect. So which is it when it comes to understanding that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Well, I think it's actually a movement between all three. And to help kind of get our minds around that, we're in the kitchen for a reason. So several times a day in our household, this is a happening place. So my wife, Shallon, and I, we've got four kids. Many of you know that if you're new to the teaching series, you didn't. We've got three boys and a girl ranging from 11 to the age of four. And so this is a happening place, particularly during dinner time when my wife is cooking. And so they're scrambling all around in here. And we've done this with all of our kids is that when they're a very, at a very, very young age and they can crawl or they're starting to walk, is that when it comes to these things around here, we have to help them understand very clearly what they are dealing with. So when I turn on the stove here, clearly there is a flame. What I don't want is my toddler who has just learned to walk to be coming over here and starting to put their hands up. So in many ways, as parents, we instill this healthy fear of the stove or the oven. Um, or not long ago, uh, we came down here and our four-year-old, and I think he may have been three, so it was probably a little bit more than just recently, was actually playing with this. And so now our knives actually go on the top of our refrigerator because we don't want our four-year-old playing with knives. Um, but when it comes to, to the stove, when it comes to the oven, where these are on and they do have access to it. We're doing everything we can to protect them, but in many ways we're kind of scaring them away from this. We're instilling this healthy sense of fear because until they can understand the awe, just the raw, sheer power and grandeur, grandeur of, of a stove or an oven, then they're at risk. But once they have this healthy fear, and once they then have an understanding and there's a sense of awe for it, now they respect it. Now they understand how to engage with this. And I think for many people, that's actually the movement that they go through in order to engage or grow in their relationship with God. A lot of people, when they first start hearing about God, there is this sense of, of fear. There's a sense of this God is big and maybe, you know, they've heard, you know, sermons before that just, you know, basically people are trying to scare them into obedience with God, that they're trying to scare them into, you know, relationship with God. And there's this sense of they have this fear, but it is not helpful or healthy if my kids always have a freaked out fear of the stove. Like I want them to make a movement towards awe and wonder so that they respect it and they know how to engage it because when this is engaged appropriately, it is very life-giving to them when they know how to engage the stove. And I believe that when we have this passage that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, 
is that we want to grow ever deeper in the awe and wonder of who God is so that we respect him more and more and therefore we're more obedient to him, not out of a sense of fear, but out of a sense of awe and wonder and respect that we trust God more and more in our lives. Um, And in a sense, you know, as you do do that, I still think that even mature believers in Jesus still always hold a little bit of that healthy fear. That there is this recognition that we aren't flippant with God. We aren't flippant with his commandments. That we recognize he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the one who rules and reigns over all. And yes, just as we talked about in the Lord's Prayer series, he is like a father who engages us at that familial level. But there's always this sense that we need to be reminded of that this is a massive, powerful God. And it's not a freaked out kind of fear. It's a healthy fear that leads to this awe and reverence. I mean, you probably can't hear it right now because it's subsided like literally right before I hit record, but it's raining here in Nashville. And so it has been not just raining, but it has been thundering and the house has been shaking. And there's like this little bit of fear because there is behind that a sense of awe and wonder and respect for the nature, for the world that God has created. And I believe that this is what it means that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That when we are in awe of who God is, when we grow in our awe of God, when we respect God more and more, we trust him at a deeper and deeper level. And the more that we are able to trust God, the more that we respect who God is, the more we will obediently follow even when we don't understand what's going on. Because our trust will be in the God we follow, not in our own understanding. And so, friends, I don't know how this hits you today. I don't know how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Maybe, you know, in one way, this was just a really great reminder that you go, yeah, I've kind of always heard that the fear of the Lord is this respect, this reverence with who God is. Uh, Maybe for others of you, you just recognize that you have an actual unhealthy fear of God. And maybe what God is doing in this teaching is moving you to a more healthy understanding of awe and reverence and respect. Uh, Maybe for some of you, you've just been struggling at where you are at to trust who God is. And maybe you're just going, dear God, remind me of your grandeur. Remind me of how amazing you are. Remind me again that you are the creator of the universe. You are in charge of all things. And help me once again follow you at a deeper and more trusting level because I believe that you'll take me where I need to go, even though I don't understand what's going on. So friends, just as we train our kids to to have a healthy respect and relationship with a stove or an oven or a knife, I believe this is the same thing that the Proverbs are saying, that we want to continue to get into the Word. We want to continue to be reminded of who God is because the more we understand who God is, the more awe and reverence and respect we have, the more we'll trust Him in times specifically when we don't understand what's going on. And this is is wisdom, friends. This is what it means to be on that journey with God. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And may you walk out this text well in your life. 